a long-awaited video, and it comes at the right time, because it is Black Friday. Until next Monday, both DxO and Topaz are running Black Friday promotions, so if you are keen on anything I'm showing you here today, it is a great time to get them, and I will put the link in the description. So, before I start, let me tell you why I'm making this video. You may have seen my previous review on DxO's latest Photo Lab 4, and I did mention just how brilliant it has become, especially with the new and super capable Deep Prime AI noise reduction. This feature is particularly useful for us Micro Four Third users, since this brilliant form has one deficiency, that is, high ISO performance. There are times we need to push it high enough to capture those shots that we need. So today, I want to compare the four softwares that I've used and tested. From my professional workhorse, the Adobe Lightroom Classic, to my previous favorite, the NYX Define 2.0, to the latest Topaz Denoise AI and DxO's Deep Prime. I will highlight the pros and cons of each and hope you to help you make an educated decision before parting your hard-earned money. Before we start, let me be clear that of the four softwares that I'm listed in this video, Lightroom Classic is the only software that requires a subscription payment, while others can be purchased as one-off license payment and used for life. They all work between Windows and Macs. On top of that, DxO, Topaz, and Nick can all be used as standalone programs as well as plugins for Adobe Suite, including both Photoshop and Lightroom, and many other photo editing softwares. Same can't be said with Lightroom Classic. It has to be run on its own, though you can export it to other plugins and back. Now, I said this comparison is solely focusing on noise reduction, as we are so critical about high ISO performance on smaller format camera these days. These softwares may be the saving grace for all those critical eyes. Now that I've used Deep Prime for a month, I can confidently say a few words about it. I've also downloaded the latest version of Topaz Denoise AI, and well, you know my relationship with Nick and Adobe. They are my workhorse for so many years. So, I want to demonstrate their strengths and weaknesses in this video, using some of my own high ISO images so you can get an idea on how well or bad they perform in various situations. First, here's an image I took inside a very, very dim, and I mean really dim party room. I took this photo about two years ago, processed and delivered to my client with an output file from Lightroom with Nix Define for noise reduction. Because of the lighting situation, I was shooting at ISO 4000 all night. I didn't use any flash at the request of my clients too. I would normally get away with lower ISO if I could use my 1.2 Pro lenses, but as I needed to be discreet, like standing further away, I had to use my 35 to 100 f2 4 third lens and not the 40 to 150 2.8 just to get a little bit more light into the sensor. But even at f2, I still need ISO 4000 and 1 16th of a second for shutter speed to capture these photos. Now you see how challenging sometimes my jobs are. Anyway, using Lightroom was straightforward. But the reason I didn't process everything within Lightroom is that I want to apply noise reduction before any sharpening. If you do both in Lightroom, you're kind of forcing yourself to have a dog fight, since sharpening and noise reduction don't go well together. You can sharpen an image effectively with a clean, noise-free image, but as soon as there is noise, any sharpening will enhance the visibility of it, so your image can never look as good in Lightroom. So my normal workflow would be first color correct and edit my files, then export them to external noise reduction software, and in this case, it's next define. When images are done and return to Lightroom, then I will apply the sharpening. Yes, it's very cumbersome, but I don't have to do this often, so it's okay with me. This is another reason why I think an all-in-one solution like Photolab is more fluid once you master it. Speaking of Photolab, here's an example that I use Deep Prime to remove noise. You can see just how good it looks even without any sharpening. The deep shadow areas are not crushed like Lightroom, and they did a job that's way better than next option. Now I open the same file with Topaz Denoise AI. First impression was slow. Everything was slow. There's an option to use my discrete graphics card, which did make a huge performance boost, but it's still slow. Every move, every setting changes resulting a preview regeneration, 
and this is super annoying. It seems to work smoother when you zoom in a little closer, but it seems that even with my maxed out computer, Dinos AI still gives me a warning of too much details to handle when I zoom out to view the whole image. And don't forget, I'm only working with a 20 megapixel Micro Four Thirds file. Any larger will mean slower performance. The result is rather mixed. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of all the output from different programs. You can clearly see which one is the winner here. But I must say that I did level the playing field by allowing them all to work in base raw files with nothing applied. Only noise reduction. But even that, DxO seems to give me the more contrasty look while Topaz has the flattest image. But we are looking at noise here. DxO has the best blend of noise removal, both luminous and color noises, and the new Deep Prime still manages to extract the details and keep them there without making the image look pasty. Lightroom noise reduction is the worst, and to my surprise, Next Define isn't much better either. And Topaz Denoise AI is kind of somewhere in between DxO and Nick, but definitely shows in the hair where the details were lost. Here's another image that many of us often do. Expose to the highlight and lift the shadow in post to get a more balanced picture. The inherent characteristics of Micro Four Thirds files is that they have a greater latitude in the shadow areas than highlights. So if you want to keep the bright areas from clipping, it is important to expose to the light. But even when an image was shot at base ISO, which technically means that it's visually noise free, when you do extreme shadow pushing, the shadow area can be very, very noisy, almost like shooting at ISO 2000. But here comes to the rescue. Okay, this is rather different compared to a shot that is captured in high ISO setting. This photo has a mixture of clean and noisy bits. All but DxO has a localized reduction option, whether by viewpoint in Next Define, local adjustment masks in Lightroom and Topaz. DxO applies global correction that affects the entire image. But worry not, have a look at this side-by-side -side comparison. You can see that even though DxO uses global correction, it doesn't damage the perfectly clean portion of the frame. Its AI algorithm is clever enough to select noisy bits in the image and denoise accordingly. And once again, DxO wins here with a fine balance of keeping clean highlights and denoising the shadow while maintaining details. Topa comes second, but very close to DxO in terms of look and balance. It loses out on the detail section. Nick is almost the same as Lightroom and only marginally better. But at this stage, both Nick and Lightroom started to look a little fake with heavy-handed noise reduction and really crushes the details. Finally, here's another image that I took in Lake District earlier this year. It is a very challenging file for any denoising software due to the sheer amount of details in this image. There are lots of fine grass and foliage. This image was shot at ISO 6400 on my EM10 Mark IV. Looking at side by side, DxO and Topaz both are by far the best in working out details across the frame. Lightroom was okay, but this time, Nick really struggled, and he thought all the fine grass and foliage were noises, and resulting a completely disastrous outcome by smoothing out all of them. There you have it, if I have to choose a denoising software today, I will have two very competent choices. DxO Photo Lab 4 Elite, which includes their proprietary Deep Prime AI denoising software, and Topaz Denoise AI. My previous favorite, Nix Define, really starting to show its age. And while good on some photos, it's just not great with images with tons of fine details. And Lightroom? Well, I wouldn't say it's industry leading anymore, and if you are preparing high ISO images for exhibition or digital display, I wouldn't bet on Adobe's solution. However, if I have to pick a winner, it has to be DxO. The only negative for Deep Prime is that it only works with raw files, while others can work with other formats, such as TIFF, which means that they can even denoise your smartphone images. While Topaz can be brilliant, it is very limited for working in high contrast images like the one I demonstrated earlier. You either have to work on a very dark raw image or a processed shadow lifted JPEG or TIFF file. It will be a two-step workflow. As I mentioned before, for Topaz to work best, you have to first denoise the file and edit them from another editor. I personally don't like it. But it all depends on your workflow and how you usually process your photos. 
And like I said, there are some links in the description where you can click and download free trials. They are affiliate links that doesn't cost you any extra, but by downloading them, you will help this channel a little bit. So that's it folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode and you know what to do now. Thumb if you liked it, and sub if you want to support this channel, and me. Peace!